because I'm waiting for Lewis to, to head back there one, one day because I would not be surprised if he did. Our gospel for this morning is from John, the 20th chapter. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord. Our strength, our Savior, and our risen Redeemer. Amen. Growing up, my memories of Easter were often of my extended family. Now, my mom was one of seven, she was the youngest, with a 20-year age gap between the oldest and her. Yeah, I know. So at one point, there were five generations. We had cousins and second cousins and other cousins and other extended family, and it got to the point that I would remember my aunts, as they were looking at me, would start naming names, and none of them were mine, until they finally went, either they got to my name correctly, or they just went, hey, hey, you, yeah, you. That happened to anybody ever? Yeah, yep, yep, I can see hands. Or the opposite, right? You're in a crowd, and someone calls out your name. And what do we instinctively do? Who said my name? And it's usually the person you don't know, but they're not calling you. They're calling someone with your name just behind you. Sometimes it's a good laugh, and then you go, or if you have one of those unique names, it's an opportunity to be like, hey, I'm not alone. The strangest thing for me, too, is some of you know this, some of you don't. I go by my middle name, so at doctor's offices and things like that, they call my first name, which I don't use very often, and so I look around going, who are they calling? Oh, right, yeah, okay, okay, that's me. 
but our names are important. Whether it's our given name or a nickname, our names carry weight, especially if someone uses your full name, right? Then you know you're in trouble. That's how I always knew. I got the full name. Whew, yeah. But that's the importance of our names. They are a cause for us to pause when we hear it. Jesus shows us that in our gospel reading for this morning. He shows up to Mary, who believes she sees the gardener veiled unknown until he pronounces her name until her name is used by Jesus. She does not know him. She has come to honor him in the traditional preparation for burial. She comes expecting to see the body to continue to weep. She does not expect to see Jesus alive. But when she is named... When Jesus calls her by name, the veil is dropped, her eyes are opened, and she recognizes who is standing before her. Calling Mary, Jesus opens her to a new understanding. Jesus makes her the first witness of the resurrection. And you can almost hear the compassion in Jesus' voice as he sees this woman who is weeping, this woman who dearly loved him, who walked with him in his ministry, there in her pain and anguish, releasing her by simply calling her name, Mary. confusion that she must have had, yet the joy and the relief being given a name, seeing the risen Lord and him calling out by name, Mary. I wonder what it would be like for Jesus to call out my name. We often use his name, we cry out to him in despair, in pain, in agony, in fear and frustration. But what would it look like for Jesus to cry out our name? To call out your name. How would you respond? How would you respond to Jesus calling out your name. Confused? Fearful? Joyful? Yet through it all, Jesus does not wish Mary to stay where she is. He does not want her to stay near the grave. Rather, as soon as he pronounces her name, he calls her to go out and to be active in her faith. Go, he said, Tell my brothers what you have seen, what you have experienced. Go out. Proclaim the good news. That death has been destroyed. That hope is restored. That the resurrection that he had promised has been confirmed. That God lives. It's a familiar story. It is a joy-filled story that we celebrate each Easter, that the tomb is empty, that God's good news goes beyond it. And so how do we respond? Did you notice that Jesus never diminishes Mary? He never diminishes the disciples for their lack of faith, for their fear, for their grief. Rather, he comes alongside them and calls them by name, encouraging them, uplifting them, caring for them, and calling them 
out, calling them to be active in their lives so that others may come to proclaim God anew, so that others may understand what it means for God to celebrate the joy of the resurrection and the promise of what has happened. To offer others, to invite others, to hear the joy of what is new and the celebration of what has come. And we are the next generation. We are called by name through the waters of baptism. We are given a new life and a new hope. We are encouraged that our faith becomes active, that we ourselves are called out into the world to proclaim the good news of the resurrection to hear the promise of what has happened, the joy that Easter is all about, the joy that is the celebration that others come to know the love of God because we have experienced it. Through this week, we heard about the love of Jesus. In that last meal where he goes to his disciples and he washes their feet and he feeds them at the table and he offers that food and that cleansing to people like Peter who denies him and Judas who betrays him. And in the midst of all of that, Jesus offers love. And he tells them, I give you a new commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. He goes to the cross to show what that love looks like, that willingness to go beyond, to sacrifice, to show us just how much we are loved by God. And then in the naming of Mary, in the naming of us, he calls us out to be active in our faith, to challenge the world around us, to show them that God's love can and does overcome all things. And we are called to proclaim it. Realizing that we are not perfect, that we falter and fail, that we are challenged by the world, yet God continues to walk alongside us, to uplift us, and to guide us to the remembrance of what this day is all about. God's love anew. God's promise was fulfilled on Good Friday. The covenant came to fruition on Good Friday. This is the next step. This resurrection reminds us that we are part of the story and that God calls us by name to go out into the world. Each of us, God calls by name to proclaim His grace, to live into His love to live in the opportunity of joy, to proclaim the love of God with the world that desperately needs to hear it now more than ever, a world that desperately needs to understand that it is not violence that will defeat violence, it is God's love that will defeat all things, and that we are able to be engaged in the world as examples and as hope that as we celebrate this day, that we can live into the joy of what this day means and of the power that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.